Hi everyone, Dan here. I'm a young music leader on the Plugin Projects and I'm here to talk to you about using social media as a musician. So, why use social media as a musician? Well, using social media is a really effective way for us to maximise our potential audience. It also means we can develop our visual branding and our online presence throughout multiple platforms. We can also do things with our music like share it to pages, submit it to playlists, you might even be able to build a relationship with another artist who has similar music to us. We can also promote any live performances that we might be doing of our own music. So whilst all of this can sound really exciting, we really need to know how to have a healthy relationship with the internet and how to stay safe on it. Let's just have a think. How do you think you could use social media to promote your music? What online platforms could you use, for example, Facebook or SoundCloud? And do you feel confident in knowing how to stay safe on the internet? One of the most important things that we need to learn how to deal with is feedback. Now, when we get positive feedback, that can make us feel really, really great. And it's totally up to us whether we feel comfortable replying to that positive feedback. That often comes in the form of a comment underneath one of our tracks. If we do feel comfortable enough to reply to those positive comments, it can be a really good way for us to interact with our audience. It can also make us seem more approachable online. However, we will come across feedback that's a little more negative or critical. And most of us generally focus on those comments more than we do the positive ones. It's only natural. But it's really important for us to have the right skills and the right perspective to deal with any comments that are more critical or unhelpful. So constructive comments might suggest that we do something different with our music or our image. They might sound like somebody who says they love our drum track but they don't like the way that we're singing over it. And it's hard to know whether these comments are coming from a genuine place or they're from somebody who just wants to provoke us. And I'm sure that you've come across a constructive comment before. What might they look like? So often the best thing to do is just not to reply to constructive comments. Even if the, the comment is coming from a genuine place, it's best just not to reply. And that might be because if we do reply, then the situation might escalate out of our control or somebody else might comment and say something more malicious. It's perfectly okay to feel anxious about feedback. Everyone gets it. You've got to remember that you're not trying to please anybody else but yourself and you know your music the best. So as well as constructive comments, we will come across unhelpful comments and they're slightly different from constructive comments. So unhelpful comments often aim to insult or they aim to cause an argument and they're not constructive and they're not helpful in any way. We might come across internet trolls or trolling and they're people who post offensive comments to provoke a reaction out of us and to escalate into an argument. It's best not to reply to these kind of comments because if we do, we give them exactly what they want and it can escalate into a further argument. We'll probably end up getting angry. We might say something that we'll end up regretting later and we could be spending that time a lot better. We could be writing or promoting our music. Think of it like a cycle. It starts off with an unhelpful or malicious comment looking for attention. You then respond to that comment. It then escalates into an argument. This then prompts more hate from the user. And of course, that affects you in a negative way or potentially puts you in danger. And that whole cycle can start again. So breaking the cycle is the most effective way to deal with malicious comments. So like before, unhelpful or malicious comment looking for attention, but this time you don't give a response or you report the comment. So the user then moves on, they get bored, or even better, they're banned from the site. So try and not let those comments get to you too much. Remember that there are simple things that you can do to help and protect yourself so you can keep promoting your music successfully. And at the end of the day, you haven't got time for it. You're a busy musician. You want to be promoting and writing your music as effectively as possible. So thinking about unhelpful, harmful or malicious comments, what other actions could you take as well as not responding or reporting the comment? 
So think more about reporting, deleting, telling. And finally, have a think about the social media sites you're using. How could you apply your safeguarding actions to those sites? Do you know how to report comments or users on each of them? So the next thing that we need to get to grips with is privacy. Now as musicians, we're going to be pretty public facing. We're going to be interacting with people who we don't even know. We just need to know how to stay in control of what others see of us on the internet. So you can implement the following actions. Set up security questions or enable extra steps to log into your accounts. Set the privacy levels on your posts. Who is allowed to see them? Do you need to tailor your posts so that only some people see them? Make sure you log out of social media accounts that you use on public computers or a shared device. Be aware of your location services on certain apps that allow others to see where you are. Keep your passwords secure. Don't use the same password for multiple accounts. Once somebody has that password, they can access all of your platforms and potentially cause a lot of trouble. Is your profile public or private? Consider that both have huge implications for you. The most important aspect is to ensure your safety. Never give out your full address or any personal information that people could use to cause you harm. So have a think. Have you done any of these already? Have a look to see if you can apply these to all of your social media accounts. So now that we've had a good look at keeping safe whilst promoting our music, let's have a look at the pros and the cons of using social media as a platform for us as musicians. So, starting with the pros, we can build a fan base, sell our music, promote shows, create a persona or an online image or brand. We can connect with other artists to promote our work. We have super easy access to online magazine promoters and other platforms. And you can build a really cool relationship with your audience. Now the cons or the downsides of using social media might be having to constantly update all of the various platforms that you have your music on. It might get expensive if you're gonna be paying for advertisement and promotion. Some websites like Facebook require you to constantly check and reply to the messages so you get a good response rating on your page. You've often got a plan ahead of time for your social media posts and you're exposing yourself and your art to the world which can be quite nerve wracking anyway. So it might be worth having a think about what pros and cons are specific to you and your music. So there are plenty of examples of artists using social media and it really making their careers. However, there are lots of examples of where social media has broken an artist's career as well. The first artist that comes to mind when I think about social media that's made an artist, I think of Stormzy, because he was amazing at marketing his music um, and he uploaded all of his freestyle grime videos to YouTube and that got a lot of traction and people started sharing it and that's how a lot of his early success came to be. He marketed his first solo EP completely by himself. He even impersonated a PR agent to contact people on his behalf. He sent his work out to magazines and online platforms and radio shows as well. So Stormzy's early DIY approach, do it yourself, it's quite a common approach for us as musicians to take now. We've got to take our music to the places where we want it to be. Storms, he's got a really great image as well, really great presence, and that all started from when he was first making his videos. His story is really one of resilience and persistence. As social media can make an artist, it can also break him as well. The perfect example was US rapper Mace. Back in 2014, he lost over a million followers on his Instagram. And that was because he brought his followers and Instagram did a massive purge where they deleted all the fake and spam accounts. So despite his credible and extensive career, his mistake was not being authentic and buying followers. It's important to be wary of buying followers on your accounts. It's way better to have an audience who genuinely care about you and your music and are willing to support you even if the audience is slightly smaller. Is everything that we see on social media true? We only really post photos, texts, videos, audio of the parts of our lives that we want people to see. This is especially true for us as musicians because we want to build an online presence. Though it's really easy to forget that other people also do this as well, even if they aren't musicians. This means that our perception of somebody's life 
isn't as accurate as we think it is because all they're doing is showing us the very best bits or what they want us to see. And you've got to remember this because you might be in awe or you might feel disheartened about somebody that you follow when you see their posts. But you've got to remember that they're not including all the bits in between. So it's not a true representation of who they are. And I've got a great example of how not everything that you see on social media is true. Blogger and artist Zilla van den Born became internet famous for successfully faking a holiday to Asia by photoshopping herself into pictures of beaches, markets and Buddhist temples, all from her bedroom. She gradually created an illusion that she was travelling around the continent, fooling her friends and family with Facebook updates and Skype calls, which involved creating fake backgrounds so it seemed that she was abroad. She even visited some beds to look as if she had been in the sun for weeks. This is what she said. Everyone can be the designer of their own digital identity. Social media is a representation of real life, but in a distorted, ideal way. I decided I wanted to show the people around me firsthand how careful you have to be in believing what you see. So have a think. Are there people that you follow on social media that when you see their posts, you feel jealous or you feel anxious? If so, then it's totally normal. You just gotta remember that they haven't included everything in their lives online. There's lots of bits in between that they haven't shown you. So let's get on to copyright and streaming. As an artist, it's really important to know your rights when it comes to your music. When you're first starting out, copyright only really comes into play when you're either working with somebody else or you're using another service to somehow benefit your music. In short, copyright is designed to basically ensure legal protection for the musical or artistic material, often to protect the credit due to the originators or creators of the content. You can find further and more detailed advice on sites such as the Musicians Union, the MU, or the Incorporated Society of Musicians, which is the ISM. Both have websites and the copyright is generally specific to the UK. Copyright can be a quite a difficult subject to navigate because there are so many different kinds of copyright. Copyright infringement, using somebody else's content without their permission, happens more than you'd think in the music industry. So quite a famous case of copyright infringement is that of Ed Sheeran. He had a song back in 2014 called Thinking Out Loud. Now, a company that represents singer-songwriter Marvin Gaye claimed that Ed Sheeran had used key musical elements of Marvin Gaye's song Let's Get It On in Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud. Ed Sheeran was then consequently sued up to £76 million for allegedly copying Marvin Gaye's song. Now, the case was dropped, but Ed Sheeran has come under fire quite a few times for allegedly taking key bits of musical material from older songs and using them in his. Another famous case is from US hip hop group De La Soul. Now they had a track on their Three Feet High and Rising album from 1989 and it was a small interlude track but they'd used a sample from another band called The Turtles and the track was called You Showed Me. Now the Turtles discovered this and sued De La Soul for using their sample without their permission. It was an undisclosed amount of money that they sued, but apparently it spanned into the millions. It's still to this day quite a controversial case because sampling is such an integral part of hip hop, especially at that time. Let's talk about streaming. So streaming has completely changed the way that we interact with music. So prior to streaming, we would have mostly listened to music via physical forms, so tapes, CDs, vinyls. And then when music became accessible on the internet, people can then buy single songs, and that meant that playlists had a greater function to pull together people's individual music taste. Music distribution services such as Ditto, DistroKid and CD Baby, among many others, can distribute your music online to more exclusive streaming platforms such as Spotify or Apple Music. And you can do that with different priced packages that they offer. The British phonographic industry recorded that an equivalent of 153 million albums were either streamed or purchased in 2019. The sales of albums and singles are gradually decreasing as streaming takes over year by year. Despite sounding like good news, most musicians who have their music on streaming platforms are receiving close to nothing in sales. 
So why is this? Unfortunately for us, streaming services pay very little to the artists that use their platform to host their music. These are some examples of popular streaming sites and the rate that they pay their artists per stream. So it's really not a lot. It works if you accumulate hundreds of thousands of streams or even millions of streams. For example, Despacito by Louis Fonzi. That accumulated over 1 billion streams and that equated to 5 million pounds in royalties. And that was on Spotify alone. But Despacito is one of the most streamed tracks on the internet. Even if we had 10,000 streams on Spotify for one of our tracks, we'd only accumulate roughly 60 pounds in royalties. There are many artists and musicians who have spoken out about the way that streaming services have changed the music industry. A perfect example of this is Taylor Swift. She pulled her album 1989 from Apple Music because she didn't agree with the free three month trial that subscribers would get, that any music they listened to in that time period, the artists weren't paid. Another quite unusual case comes from US funk band Volvpec. Now they had an album called Sleepify, a completely silent album, which is a bit of a weird thing to have on a streaming platform, but why? The band figured by having a silent album on Spotify, they could get their fans to stream the album whenever they could, usually when they slept. And what was the point of this? Well, it resulted in $20,000 worth of royalties that paid for the upcoming tour. The album was eventually taken down for violating Spotify's terms and conditions, but the band still got their money. So that covers the overview of using social media as a musician. You can pair this video with the worksheet to go over any of the topics that we've talked about. Good luck.